इस ब्लूमबर्ग यू टीवी This is Talkback. I'm Hindu Sen Gupta. Delighted to welcome on the show Montek Singh Aluwalia. Montek Singh Aluwalia, thanks very much indeed for your time. Nice to be here. I wanted to begin by asking you. Essentially, is the rate hike the first sign of withdrawal of stimulus? Well, I don't think it's the first sign because, quite honestly, we have been talking about uh, the need for some kind of an orderly exit. I think the Reserve Bank itself uh, raised the. CRR rate some months ago, uh, the budget indicated that the fiscal deficit in the current year is going to be reduced. Uh, you might say that the rate hike, very small rate hike, is actually consistent with what people have been expecting. I mean, the timing may have been a matter of speculation, but I, I don't think the direction of the change came as a surprise to the markets at all. When you say, and you're right in saying that this has been spoken of before, that there'll be an orderly, phased-out withdrawal of of stimuli, um, is there a time frame for that withdrawal? I would anchor it around the fiscal deficit. I mean, a monetary mon monetary policy will respond to however people view the underlying inflation rate as behaving. And if it turns out, uh, if it turns out as we think it will, that the inflation rate will moderate very considerably, maybe in a couple of months' time, uh, then you know the pressure to act on the monetary side will ease. But I think the fiscal reduction has to continue because it's part of a, if you like, a medium-term macroeconomic uh, readjustment. Uh, that has a time frame of about two to three years because the, I, we're not going to get back to a very low fiscal deficit in less than three years' time. Were you surprised by the timing? Because a lot of people seem to be surprised by the timing. Yes, it was expected, but it was probably expected perhaps a month later. Well, you know, central banks very often like to surprise markets. I mean, the honest truth is that central banks should not act in a manner which is something completely contrary to what most th people think are going to happen. So in that environment, they can either follow the markets in an incredibly useless way or take the markets a little bit by surprise. So I, I, I don't think it was a bad idea to take the markets by surprise. You have suggested that you see prices, especially food prices, sort of stabilizing and coming down uh, substantially in the next couple of months. Um, what, it's, it's optimistic. What brings that optimism? Why are you sure well, that it will me, probably stabilize? Let me say, I didn't say food prices would necessarily come down. I said inflation will come down. Right. So, I mean, for prices to come down in a steady manner is virtually a deflationary situation. I don't expect that. But I don't expect uh, food inflation to be double digit uh, a few months later. That's, that was the key uh, point. Why am I optimistic about that? Well, first of all, I think some of the rise in food prices that we've seen is actually a relative price change. I mean, uh, we need a greater thrust in agriculture. Uh, farmers need to invest a lot more on the farm. Uh, and that's only going to happen if production becomes a little more effective. Uh, and so there was, and, and globally, food prices have gone up quite a bit. So Indian food price increase is sort of a reflection of what's been happening globally. Now, of course, in theory, I mean, you could have, uh, uh, you could have a relative price change and yet not have an overall inflation if other prices are flexible downwards. But of course, they're not. So whenever this happens, during the adjustment, not only food prices go up, the overall rate of inflation goes up. But, you know, barring any major change in the global inflationary situation, and particularly commodity prices, uh, I would not expect inflationary pressure to continue. And I think there's a lot of slack on the supply side. So we should get back to a comfortable 5% or thereabouts rate of inflation during the course of the coming fiscal year. Let me ask you the other concern that some people had after the much applauded budget, but after the budget, uh, uh, some of the critics pointed out that there is a fear that India might go back to a high expense or an expensive economy. I'm not aware that there is such a fear, but I can understand that when newspapers start talking about inflation rates going up, and they have been going up, of course, government has also expressed concern. I mean, people, people tend to project the short run forever. Uh, so I think the key issue really is two to three months down the road, will people be saying that the 
inflationary upsurge has now ended and reversed itself and inflation rates are coming down. Now, if that happens, I think expectations will change. I don't think there was anything in the budget that would have, should have encouraged people to believe that we are going to become a more expensive economy. I mean, after all, from a macro point of view, the budget says we're going to reduce the fiscal deficit over a period of time. Uh, and from the tax point of view, I don't think there's anything on the tax front that would justify fears on the inflation front. As a matter of fact, if we are able to do, as I hope we will be able to do, bring in the GST, the goods and services tax, maybe by beginning of next year, uh, that would be a huge factor uh, increasing efficiency in the economy, uh, which I think will help to ease uh, inflationary pressures. Let me go to then what the former finance minister, Yashwan Sinha, sort of told us recently. He said one of the main triggers of the fear of becoming an expensive economy is, of course, home prices. And home prices, he saw, would incessantly now be on the rise as interest rates firm up and so on and so forth. Uh, is there any measure, do you think, um, which would sort of bring down the sphere, bring down prices of homes, which is a key concern? Well, I mean, uh, he's uh, not only the former finance minister, but he's a leading member of the opposition. And it's normal in a democracy that the opposition finds fault with the budget. I, quite frankly, do not think that uh, right now, most people think that home prices have actually come down because of the recession. Now, if Mr. Sinha wants them to come down even further, I'm sure there are many homeowners who would want to support him. And personally, the government also feels that looking medium term, the next two to three years, the only solution on home prices is increasing the supply of homes. And that requires a serious implementation of many aspects of something like, you know, the Jawaharlal National Urban Renewal Mission, which is going to lay the foundation for a big expansion in the supply of homes. That's the only thing that's really going to bring down home prices, not monetary policy.